Welcome everyone to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make a healthy living lifestyle possible. I'm your host, Fred Zucker, coming to you from the campus of Parker University in Dallas, Texas. Our special guest today is Dr. Robert Leach. Dr. Leach, welcome to the program. We're glad you could be with us. Thank you. Dr. Leach is a chiropractor, a practitioner, author, speaker, and authority on the structure function relationship and its role in chiropractic practice. Dr. Leach, it's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to hear you speak. Uh, Dr. Leach uh, is the author of The Chiropractic Theories, a textbook of scientific research. The first edition was published in 1980. I think it is safe to say that Dr. Leach's book has become one of the classics of instruction for doctors of chiropractic. They've all read your book, Dr. Leach, and many of them were lined up to have you sign the book today. And I know our students enjoy that. (laughs) Dr. Leach has won virtually all the awards that are available in the Mississippi Chiropractic Association, as well as national and international recognition of the many contributions you have made to the art and science of chiropractic. Dr. Leach, tell us a little bit about your career and sort of give us an overview of what has brought you to this place today. I had a wonderful career, and uh, I started out an undergraduate study in journalism, so I always had a critical thinking and... It just right from the, you know, even before I went into journalism, I was, was, we loved to argue in our family. So I was was raised with that. And, um, you know, just not, not always just the first thing you see, just believing it, but going, you know, probing deeper. And so uh, it was when I got into chiropractic and uh, because it had helped me so much, you know, my own personal issues doing judo and soccer, I, uh, I found really that I had a lot of, you know, questions that um, how in the world could you have a profession that was helping people so incredibly? Right. And yet the science just wasn't what it needed to be. And and the public, there was there was such a disconnect in the public. Either people either loved you or hated you. If they had been to a chiropractor, they loved they you. loved you. If they had never been to a chiropractor, they thought you were a quack. Right. And this was every day walking up and down the street. And how could there be such a disconnect? Um, you know, were chiropractors killing everybody that, you know, right. and, then, and that's why they hated. And then the, the more I got into it, obviously it was, we, we saw that it was part of the hundred year war with medicine. So right. it's just, uh, my book started out to ask a lot of questions and then it sort of developed into a reportage of science as we know it. And each edition was added to the was body. added to that. Yes, sir. Well, it's obviously become a, a, a most useful tool for the training of chiropractors. But the world of evidence for chiropractic has grown exponentially in the last twenty-five or thirty years, and I think that's going to continue. That certainly seems to be the the path we're on as a profession. Certainly here at Parker University, that's very much a factor in our planning for the future, and I'm sure it is uh, internationally as well. Absolutely, and really, my hope is that my work only introduces people to the science of, you know, of chiropractic. Right. right. It is not supposed to be the end all and be all. It's supposed to introduce you, and then now you get on PubMed, and now you, you start right. looking at this incredible body of growing knowledge, as you so eloquently just stated. It's just astronomical increase in uh, in information. Right. And that will give us authority, that which is one of the the secrets to, I think, successful practice of any health profession. And chiropractic has been looking for that authority for these many years, the 100 years of war, as you've talked about it, and we're getting closer and closer every day. Well, here in Texas, we've been fighting our own little Alamo, so to speak. It's not an Alamo for us, thank goodness, but uh, a a war that we've been waging here uh, to make sure that we maintain the scope of practice that has been in effect since 1949. I'm sure you're aware of the issues that have been... uh, joined in the legislative session that's underway in Austin right now, coming to its close, and we're doing well. The, the issues that we've been uh, supporting and promoting uh, are coming to fruition. In fact, we have several that are ready for the governor's signature. Just wanted your comments on that. That's sort of a part of this whole mosaic of how chiropractic has been evolving in the last 50 years or so. Yeah, it's sort of a sad commentary that, you know, for example, the state I practice, Mississippi, was second to the last state to get a licensing act. Right. And we have to tweak those from time to time, and we have to make sure that we have the scope that we need to have. And I'm not talking about 
uh, peddling drugs or trying mm. to go outside of mainstream chiropractic. I'm just talking about being able to be good chiropractors. Right. And sadly, that's what you're fighting in Texas. You're, 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 all you want to do is be able to diagnose a patient. And I don't care whether you want to call it differential diagnosis or whatever. Right. By law, if a patient walks into our office and they've got cancer or they're going to have a stroke in progress, we've got to know to, that, you know, that's give them the happening. option of going to go into the emergency room by ambulance or, you know, probably, exactly. uh, or your wife drive you, but you're going to get there. You're not going to get an adjustment right out of the gate. And that's called a diagnosis, regardless right. of what you call it. Exactly. And, and or it's at least a differential. And you're, you're having a battle over essential practice. The basics of practice. That's yes. right. That's right. But I think that the, the legislators, in many, in many ways, uh, thank goodness for our new president, Dr. Bill Morgan, who was able to make the case strong with his background at Walter Reed and Bethesda Naval Hospital. I think he spoke with great authority himself about chiropractic and what needs to be done. And the TCA has been a very strong pro- proponent for this. And so we've worked very closely with them. So that's been very good. You're absolutely, Dr. Morgan is spot on, and yes. he's a great advocate. That's definitely. I was looking through your, your information. I was particularly struck by the title of one of your recent articles, Despite Friendly Fire Opposition to Chiropractic in the Magnolia State. I assume it sort of builds on the same thing we've just been talking about, but uh, I'd be interested to hear more about that article. We, we uh, I interviewed uh, some of the pioneers that were directly involved in us getting our license in Mississippi. I was also very fortunate, one of the other pioneers that had passed on left me his complete archives. Really? And very good. boxes and boxes of books. What a resource. Um, I did not personally go through all of them, but my friend Joe Keating did and cataloged and put PDF files and mm. all sorts of things. And I was able to take that information along with the interviews I did with some of the other actors. And I offered to interview some of the medical actors that were Mm. involved in us being fought tooth and nail from ever getting a license in the first place. Right. And why would you, wouldn't you want a practitioner to have a license so that you could sort of regulate and make sure that you know, they did certain, met certain minimum standards. Wouldn't that be a good thing for the public? Right. But yeah. yet we had all this opposition. But the stunning thing is not the medical opposition. And I couldn't personally interview to get their viewpoints because they wouldn't offer them. Hmm. But that wasn't the, the sad part of the story. The sad part of the story is when we had uh, people within chiropractic fighting over these sort of turf over you know, diagnosis or, mm, or right. not. And it, it's, it's a sad commentary that uh, we were our own worst enemy at, at times then, as unfortunately sometimes we are today. Right. The, the bigger enemy ought to be ignorance. The bigger enemy ought to be people not getting optimal conservative spine care. That's right. That's right. Not this internecine quarreling that we have, have had exactly. for a long time. Uh, we shall be pulling together with our colleagues outside of chiropractic and healthcare, we're all working together for the same thing, and that is the benefit of our patients. So I, it's, that seems to be a continuing issue, maybe getting a little bit muted, but still, still very much there. Dr. Leach, you, you have such an incredible vantage point with your research emphasis and your practice. Tell us where you think chiropractic is going these next few years coming up. I think it's an exciting time for chiropractic. I'm excited that it is with the CDC coming out against opioids. Right, um, right. The statistics are just unbelievable that the opioids and muscle relaxants do not change the natural history of back pain. They do not help patients get well right, faster. Right. The number one reason every survey I've ever seen that chiropractors go to chi- or that patients go to chiropractors is for spine care. Right. It's for back and neck pain mainly back pain. And chiropractors should own this. Should own that. First exactly. and foremost. We should be evidence informed. It's it's the perfect storm of medical doctors being told, hey, refer people to Tai Chi, to yoga, to acupuncture right. or massage if you don't believe in chiropractors. But don't give them drugs. Don't give them drugs. Uh, it's a perfect storm when we have the evidence 
that we get better results than physical therapy. Certainly the opposite of that cannot be said. And so we have all this data. Now, I love physical therapy and I refer patients to physical therapy. And when my mama had a stroke, I was happy that physical therapy walked her through that rehab. Sure. And we studied physical therapy as part of our, you know, getting our chiropractic degree. But as we mature in this profession and understand that this is something we can own and that we can meet a critical need, and then as our research evolves, then treating infants with colic or treating all the many other things that that we're doing and that I think there will be evidence that in a lot of these areas that chiropractic will be a great choice. Right. And that will continue to grow. And if it doesn't, then we go in a different direction with that. But in the meantime, this is something that would keep way more chiropractors than we currently have or that we could currently hope to train That's right. with our pres- present uh, structure. Um, the demand is just going to be unbelievable. Right. And I don't think we're far from that. I think that's coming very soon. Well, Dr. Leach, thank you so much for being with us today on To Your Health. I hope that you and Mrs. Leach enjoy your time here in, in Dallas. I know our students, our faculty and staff who had the benefit of your presentation today were edified, as I was, and we're really glad that you're here. Please tune in again for more To Your Health. We'd love to have you come back. Thanks. Bye-bye. 